Hello and welcome to Sudo Cool. Today we invite a special guest to our channel. His name is Nishan Chahar. He works for Microsoft. He has recently joined Microsoft and he is here to share with all of you the tips and tricks to become a better software engineer. He is going to share the learnings that he that he have had along past few months. Also, what are the new techniques and tools he uses and how his experience has been. I really hope that his experience and learnings can be useful to any of you who are planning to join a new company or you who have already joined a new company and are struggling with the initial phase so let's get started welcome nishant how are you today thank you so much yogita for inviting me to your channel i'm good the weather is really chilly here in delhi right now so it's cold oh okay okay yeah so uh, actually this year dubai is also relatively uh, chilly like last year it was fine but this year it is okay. chilly we will just uh, keep it very casual and start with some few questions uh, about your experience so what do you uh, what do you think uh, your top 3 learnings had been in microsoft so far so top 3 learnings one is uh, you should always be curious to learn new things because when i started my journey uh, i had no idea about ios development i had no idea about deep design patterns and i had to learn all that in a very short duration of time because the first uh, issues that i started getting was in september i think and i joined in july so i was helping my teammate in solving some bugs but the actual uh, the feature i got was in september mid september end so in two months i had to learn about ios development i had to learn about design patterns and it was pretty <laughs> difficult at the start because learning a new language from scratch is a little difficult in the start plus the like xcode because you will have uh, you will also have to learn the new software the uh, xcode i am using is pretty different from other like vs code or sublime i never had any debugger i never used debugger or anything when i was in college and everything was so new to me so yeah you should be curious and you should be ready to learn that is one uh, learning the other one is uh, you should just ask questions like if you have a doubt in anything just ask people around you will get to know about multiple things and that will definitely help you out and finally be up front like if you have a problem in anything just uh, call it out if you think you will not be able to deliver something because of time crunch or because of any problem just talk to your manager talk to your team they'll definitely help you out rather than taking it to, to the like last moment and then telling them that would create some problem if you will be up front that you have a problem and you will be you will not be able to deliver something just tell your manager or your teammates that will definitely help you out i'm sure that uh, this will help a lot of people and yes i do agree with the with the for uh, the starting two points and the last point especially that uh, we should not delay up to the last moment and we should always tell a friend that we are facing problems and true people are helpful managers are helpful they are there to make you succeed so yeah i mean these these are very important learnings that you have shared with us thank okay. you okay what do you think <laughs> what do you think uh, uh, do you have any tools or do you use any kind of softwares that can make that make you efficient at work or that help you deliver faster do you have any uh, tools in your toolkit that you want to share with other people so uh, there are only few tools that i use in my daily routine uh, one is notion when i am scripting for my youtube channel the, then i use notion to write jot down the notes or the things will have, which i have to talk to, uh, talk about in the video other than that i generally use the software which are like xcode i just use xcode vs code i use azure devops for like pull request and stuff and that is pretty much it i don't use a lot of softwares to do stuff i just stick to the basic ones like you don't have any alternative for xcode there are alternatives for vs code but the uh, merging conflict thing is really easy in vs code so i uh, stick to that and yeah using teams and all the microsoft softwares for daily routine <laughs> that's all that's a that's a good tip about uh, merging conflicts because that is something that uh, we have to deal with almost on daily basis so i am sure uh, people would find it useful 
okay uh, uh what would you say because anybody who is joining a new company whether they are experienced or not or maybe they are freshers generally people are assigned to new projects and the code base is completely new sometimes even the tech stack is new people are not familiar how do you go about start contributing on such projects or on, on such work where you have to learn everything from scratch be it code base or be it the tech stack how do you start so i was in the similar situation a few months back because the code base was really new it was a very large code base then i had to learn a new tech stack uh, swift was really new to me design patterns were really new to me and everything was like overwhelming because there was so much to do and very little time because you have to start contributing as well so first of all when you are learning a new tech stack i would suggest just go uh, learn about the basics like how exactly things work in that particular language or in that particular framework that will definitely help you out uh, get familiar with the softwares that you will be using if you are like uh, you will start working in java and you are using a different ide for that then you should be familiar with that ide so that the work is easier because there are things which you uh, learn while you are like doing stuff so it was really difficult for me when i started like debugging and stuff because i had never used a debugger and i like asked my colleague to like tell me how to do that and after that it became very easy for me so yeah when you are learning something new just get, get familiar with the uh, language get familiar with the tech stack and you are good to go and just take it so if you have doubts just ask questions and yeah you will be able to do anything you want okay do you do you prefer uh, learning about uh, design patterns or new language from the documentation or do you prefer to go to youtube videos or I, you use a combination of both <laughs> combination of both mostly but i usually prefer videos because i don't know i have been using that throughout my college life and that has been helping me so i'm more like inclined towards using videos for learning rather than reading through notes or reading through documentation okay okay and while uh, learning a new tech stack or uh, you know contributing to a new code base what do you think is is a good time distribution because you can learn all the theory you want but basically at a there comes a point where you would want to con- start contributing or fix a bug or write the first line of code so how uh, what do you think is a good time distribution to focus on theory and then actually uh, contributing because uh, maybe the actual writing of code or actual contribution can make you uh, get to uh, know the code base faster exactly exactly so what happened with me i took around 2 3 weeks to learn the basics of swift but i was able to write much code when i started like working on my feature because i was able to learn a lot more things than i was just when i was just going through the documentation or watching youtube videos so as soon as you are a little familiar with the uh, tech stack or the framework or anything just start contributing because when you start contributing you will be able to understand the doc, uh, the code base and you will be able to like understand the framework or the language as well so just uh, understand the basics like if you are able to read and write the code then you should just just start contributing uh, in that project or yeah that's that's one good tip right there that if you're able to read and write the syntax of the language that you're contributing in or newly uh, you're learning in a uh, for the very first time that is the cue where you should start contributing to the actual source uh, so nishant in your uh, past 4 uh, 5 months uh, have you ever gotten into a situation where there is an issue on production level and you have helped debug it or you have helped solve it and can you share that experience like what uh, an, a new engineer can actually do and how the experience was so i recently got a production level issue which was assigned to me uh, last week or last last week and firstly i was like yaar main kaise karunga ye because i have no idea why that issue came and everything but i talked to my mentor and then he like guided me how to go about it so first of all what you have to do is go to that crash like understand why the crash is happening from where the crash is happening then you can just go through the logs and uh, like which uh, which part triggered that uh, issue or which part triggered that like a uh, bug so then you can just go to your code base start debugging it try to find the line where it could have broken the code so that is what i followed and i was able to like solve the issue were you were you nervous or uh, like were you in pressure when this was assigned to you so i was in i was a little nervous but then i just talked to my mentor and he was like yeah 
हो जाएगा डोंट वरी एंड देन ही टोल्ड मी द फर्स्ट इशू आई गॉट आई सॉल्व इट विद हिम लाइक I was with him. I was sitting with him, and he was telling me, "Yeah, uh, this is how we do it. Then we do this. Then we do this." And I was able to like understand the whole process, like how exactly I have to debug uh, issue, a uh, production issue. Okay, okay. I think those are uh, that is the steps. Those are the steps that anybody would go about. Uh, even even the senior engineers, like logs and crashes, are our best friends. That's how we know that what went wrong, and that's how we figure out uh, production level issues. so um, what are the new things that you have learned uh, uh, recently or like when you have started working uh, for example you shared about design patterns so what are uh, what are the new uh, techniques or the new things that you have learned in the industry which you might not have even heard about in college and you realize okay this is very important part in the software journey so i have learned about a few design patterns patterns not a lot the one of one of them is uh, dependency injection i was not familiar about it but i learned about it when i was assigned the task because that is what we are using mostly so dependency injection is one of them then i also started writing unit tests i had no idea about unit tests when i was in college i had a subject but you know when you are learning online and you are online you have an online semester subject you don't study about study in that <laughs> in india <laughs> right. at least so i had no about uh, i had no idea about testing or unit test so i just learned that a few weeks ago and yeah these were the few, these were the things which i learned and also like uh, swift ios and everything also but majorly these two things okay what do you think about unit tests like do you think that those are really uh, necessary for any project or especially when you are dealing with something which goes on to production and uh, like what do you think if somebody writes unit test what is the advantage they gain and if somebody doesn't write unit test what is the disadvantage that can occur so uh, writing unit test like helps you because if there is any change in the function or if there is any change in the code you will get to know if it is working or not if there are unit tests or if Uh, there are any crashes or any issues that test will help you out in like cracking those so it is sort of a first line of defense like if you are not able to uh, like figure out any issue when you are writing the code but after writing unit test you will be able to out acha this was not working this should be changed or anything so they are important and yeah they are pretty useful okay so uh, that's what we gain that unit tests are very useful you might not write them in your college uh, projects but in the real world uh, software you have to go through unit test you have to write unit right. test because those are actually like i think those are the uh, guard rails of your software and uh, developers have to have them in order to uh, Uh, assure, uh, ensure that the uh, software is of good quality and bug free uh, what do you uh, think about uh, the process of uh, lead code grind which people have to go through before they are uh, uh, inter- before they actually start working in the companies because people do go through uh, lead code solve 200 300 600 questions and then crack big companies like microsoft itself and then uh, then what happens do you think whatever grind you have gone through it has helped you in land obviously it has helped you in landing the job but has that grind helped you in your real work or it is not relevant or you just think that it uh, uh, helps you to develop a mindset like what is your what is your take on that does that grind helps you after the job also it helps you in developing a problem solving mindset because there are a lot of problems which are thrown at you when you are working uh, at a company like you have to solve new problems you have to solve new challenges which are thrown at you so it creates a problem solving mind- mindset definitely it like it teaches you hard work it teaches you like how to write code how to write good code all these things are learned when you are grinding lead code i think apart from that uh, it sometimes helps because there are data structures which are used in problems when you are uh, like making a product or like building anything so data structures are used there so yeah lead code helps but solving 1000 2000 questions is not like necessary you just have to solve a few you have to solve 200 250 questions that is more than enough if you are able to solve that properly if you are able to learn the concept behind those problems then you are good to go so it helps the gist is this only 
okay okay yeah because i asked this because uh, many times it happens that when people are really frustrated with the lead code process they come up with arguments like that i am not going to write recursion every day i am not going to write a dp problem in my day to day job every day right uh, then why i am going through all this grind so i personally think that uh, it is necessary for companies to filter and that's why they have a set process in place but also uh, there is a hidden uh, Uh, advantage as you said that it develops your problem solving right. skills and i do agree with you that in our day to day job it's not necessary that we end up writing a dp code every day but it is definitely true that we solve multiple problems in a day and those problems come up in different forms and different challenges and they are just thrown at you be it debugging at production level be it solving for a particular use case or writing a new feature or helping a teammate out with some issue that he or she is facing so that problem solving mindset and challenging mindset where you are ready to solve problems in a in a limited amount of time with pressure building up i think uh, that helps so i agree with you there but uh, i just wanted to know what is your opinion about that because you have gone through the grind thank you so much ravita for like inviting me to your channel i had a really good time we have discussed a lot of things here in this video we also have another video on my channel you can also check that out so first of all thank you so much okay uh thank you nishan for taking out time and uh, doing this uh, this was a really uh, comfortable and fun experience and yes please follow nishan on his channel he creates very informative videos about software life about different uh, areas of how a software engineer life looks like and he have some pretty interesting videos from his day to day life as well do follow his channel and do follow him in, follow him on instagram as well all the links are in the description and please let us know how did you like this video was there any point that you would have wanted for us to discuss but was not covered we'll try to make a follow up video and what do you think about the current points that we discussed and i hope this uh, this video added value to your time and i hope you find this useful thank you take care see you in the next video